Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney. I'm popping on here real quick at the beginning of the video um, to let you know that um, there, I forgot to put this into the actual video, there is going to be no um, Feature Friday today for Love Notions because um, focusing on the new release of the Aria, which is their new button-up shirt pattern, it is still on sale. Um, I think I'll talk about that later in the video, but um, uh, their big spring sale it, or Love Notions typically does um, three sales a year. One at the beginning of the year, um, one around Mother's Day for May, and then another one in October, which is uh, Tammy's birthday. So their big sale starts on Monday. So it will be Monday through Friday next week, the 2nd through the 6th. It will not include the Aria. So don't worry about, you know, buy that now while it's on sale because that sale ends on Monday and that's when the 40, it's 40% 40 off, 40% off sale. And you'll be able to use my Tomcat 10 code for an additional 10% off, which is very exciting. <laughs> Um, so definitely grab that Aria, but I just wanted to let you all know, we were given the go-ahead to let you guys know so you can start filling up your um, wish lists over the weekend. I will have, um, I think I'm going to have three days of content going out next week. Um, we will do, uh, it'll probably be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week, and so I won't have a video on Tuesday, because um, I'll be doing Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday Friday just to do some Love Notions intense <laughs> videos, just getting you, um, giving you some ideas and stuff and ways to utilize that sale to your best advantage. So I just wanted to come on and say that real quick. Um, so yeah, this weekend you can get your um, wish list in order and I will be giving you some ideas and all that kind of stuff next week. All right, now to the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have, today's Friday and today is also um, August 29th so it is the day before the um, uh, selfless, selfless, so April 22. Ooh, I'll put the hashtag here, um, challenge. So tomorrow on April 30th, last day of the month is the day to post all of your selfless sewing that you've done this month for a chance to win all sorts of prizes. I will put the, um, basically you just have to tag the two gals. I'll put their Instagram handles. Um, I'll put all the directions down below. You just have to use the hashtag. You can have as many entries as you want um, of selfless sewing and that you've done in the month of, of April and then tag both ladies and I again I'll put that all down in the description box below. So I have eight entries. I actually I think I'm only gonna do six entries because my sons are it's two of the same thing just different fabrics and it's an outfit so I'm just gonna do each outfit as a separate entry. Um, so I'm gonna have six entries though which is very exciting. Now uh, but I do have eight pieces to share with you today. Let's get into this. So I've got two things for my daughter, four things for my son but it's just really just two it's two of the same shirt and two of the same shorts and different fabrics. And then I have two things that I've made for my sister. So I'm going to have things up on Lena. Um, I do not have footage of my sister in the two items that I made for her yet. So you're seeing this on Friday. Um, I'm filming this a few days earlier, but I'm actually going to be with her on Friday. We're meeting in Chicago. Um, which is very exciting. Uh, girls weekend. But I'm going to get footage of her um, and pictures in both of the two, the two shirts that I've made for her. So those will be on Instagram on Saturday, but, um, I'll have twirls that I will also film and I'll just show those to you like at the beginning of Tuesday's video or something next week. So I will have, um, footage of her in it so you can actually see that or you can go take a sneak peek on, um, Instagram on Saturday, but yeah, I will show you guys on Tuesday. Okay, let's get going. All right. We'll start with my daughter and then we'll move on to my son. So um, we'll talk about this one in just a second just because I've got her dress that I made her here in my lap. So I made her Vogue 9299, this pattern right here. Um, and we just did, we, we did beauty. <laughs> it's just a view that the gal is wearing. Now this pattern is technically like a tunic pattern. It's not a dress pattern, but my daughter is only 5'2", and I, uh, there's like little, it's kind of hard to tell. This also can be a shirt, which she wants to kind of try out. Although it's not unlike the Thea, the Liberty Thea, um, Thea Boho blouse, which was an old Vogue pattern. Um, the sleeves are done kind of the same way, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was like the same block and they just made it into two patterns. But um, yeah, I don't know. We may try the, the 
shirt at some point. But it's got a banded collar. It's got, she just loves these big, these big sleeves with the, with the cuff in here. Uh, but there's slits that kind of come up on the side for your leg. I just sewed those down further and I'll show you here in a second um, to make it, I mean, I feel like it's still a modest length on her. So we're using it as a dress. I just didn't take any length off of it. I made it as is. Um, we made the size of six. No, we made the size eight, I think. I was looking at finished bust, um, finished measurements. We made the size eight for her. So she's a 31 and a half inch upper bust, a 34 and a half inch full bust, a 25 inch waist, and a 35 and a half inch hip. <laughs> so she's very hourglass. <laughs> Um, anyway, that, that's kind of, and we made her the size eight, even though that's not the size, like if you looked at the sizes that the pattern gives you, um, the bust for a size eight is 31 and a half. I um, mean, her bust is 34 and a half. Um, but there was plenty of these in order for us to do this. I didn't do a full bust adjustment on it. Although I will say, and you'll see this in the, um, clips, I, there's no darts in this top. It's just like a loose fitting top. I think making this for her again, I'm going to add a dart and give her just like a one inch full bust adjustment, um, like half inch on each side. Cause there is when she stands just a little bit of gaping and I think that would eliminate it. But this is her dress. So, um, I mean, I'll put footage of her in it. This is what she wore for Easter. This is a uh, cotton lawn and this is the Lady McElroy Anaconda Antithesis. So there's snakes. Maybe you can see the snakes on it. But this one also has the beautiful flowers and we even put, um, there's little bees on it. Um, so I made sure there was a little bee there on her collar. It's so cute. Uh, but this is the, ugh, it comes in like a sagey green color and then this dusty blue and maybe also a cream background. I can't remember now. Uh, but this is obviously the dusty blue. This is, all, all these colors are in her color palette. It's a very loose fitting dress when, you know, made up out of the way, right um, out of the packet. Uh, the sleeve is your standard sleeve at the top, and then there's a seam where this gigantic rectangle is gathered into that um, regular sleeve, and then it's gathered into the cuff. It's very easy. Um, this does have you finish off just the seam allowance to do the placket, which you know I don't like. Um, I will show you how I, I mean, I have a video on how I sew a continuous lap placket, but um, I'll, it's a very easy alteration on how I alter the pattern. I'm just making a line and then marking it, but I can definitely show that to you. Uh, but yeah, I did put a continuous lap placket in there. Um, use, I've been using these buttons a ton. You're going to see these on my son's shirts that I made as well, but um, not my sister's though. Yeah, but they just work really, really well. But the real kicker for this dress, because she likes to uh, be nipped in at the waist. That is her, um, that's what she likes to show off on her body. I get that. That is not my preference for my own body. I prefer like a little shift dress or something that skims over the waist um, on my own body, but um, on, she just loves a good Nipton waist, which is why she loved this pattern because it's got like, it's almost like an oboe belt. Um, it's real wide and the instructions did not call for interfacing in this front piece and I added it and I'm very glad that I did. Uh, but it wraps, it goes, um, this goes in the front and then it wraps, you'll see it when it's on Lena, <laughs> but then it wraps around and then ties. Um, and she just loved, she just loved the way that that looked. So she loves this. She also paired it with, um, cause it was very cold on Easter. She put her blazer, which is kind of this, it's got the greens that are in this in that blazer in a, a tweed. And she, um, put this over it and it was, you know, I don't print, print mix much. Like hardly at all, really. But this was print mixing because there is a plaid in that tweed jacket. Um, it's not like an in-your-face plaid. But when she came downstairs wearing the two together, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, that is print mixing done correctly. <laughs> and I guess that's just something maybe she's picked up by watching others or what not. She's not from watching me because I don't, I I don't know. that It makes me um, nervous a little. I don't know. But... I thought she pulled it off well. So I may be biased too. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that is it. Her Vogue 9299. Uh, she loves it. I love it. I love that I can make her things in not only that are her style, but that are in fabrics that are in her colors, no matter what's in the store, but also fabrics that speak to her. And I've mentioned before, she is a huge snake lover. We do not have a snake. My husband would never allow a snake in the house, but she watches a couple of YouTube videos, um, channels, 
snake discovery is one of them. She just finds them fast reptiles in general fascinating. So anyway, that is her new dress. Okay, let me put this on Lena and then I will come back and talk about the next thing I made for her. Okay, before we go on to this um, next piece, I just, um, you know, this is what the belt looks like on it. She'll always wear it with probably this belt. Um, but I also forgot to say, I did finish off, it's a shirt tail hem, and so I finished it off with the bias, um, half inch bias facing, or bias tape facing, however you want to call that. It's a half inch wide. Started off a little, I like to go a little bigger than one inch, and then each side's been folded into the center to make half inch wide bias tape. <laughs> I use my half inch wide bias tape maker. I am gonna do a video that, on that. A very basic, this is how I make bias tape video, um, if you're interested. So that is on the list of tutorials that will be coming up this summer. Um, anyway, I just my favorite way to finish off a hem and I think it looks lovely. This is very wrinkly. It just came out of the wash. Um, so it will need a good steam before she wears it again. Um, but I think, yeah, it's just lovely. This fabric came from Minerva. Um, I get some questions on Minerva. I have affiliate links with Minerva, which means I get a commission when you guys use my links. And I always write anything that I get affiliate links on, it always says affiliate right after it. So you guys know, um, it's no extra cost to you or anything, but I do get a commission on, um, a few pattern companies and Minerva is the only uh, fabric shop that I get affiliates from. Are you coming up here? Come on. But, um, I do pay for them with my own money. <laughs> so I, with the exception, I, I am part of their ambassador program, so sometimes I do get fabric uh, free from them in exchange for posts on their site. Are you coming up here? Come on. Good gracious. There's Gidget. Um, but it's not, I don't do those very often. I Just because I got a lot on my plate. <laughs> but this, I, I buy everything else that I get from Minerva, I buy with my own money. So um, this is from Minerva. It is Cotton Lawn, and um, I will link it down in the description box below because I think they had at least two colorways of this fabric um, below, if snakes are your thing as well. Okay, next garment. Guys, I think that this obsession of mine with the cashmere at Stanton is so funny because I am not, I mean, you'll notice on the channel, I don't, um, I just don't wear athletic, like athleisure that much. I mean, I have like a couple of pieces um, some workout clothes, that kind of thing. And I've got some like more comfortable pants, that sort of thing. But I just think that it's so funny that I'm having this love affair with this sweatshirt pattern <laughs> of all the patterns for me to have a love affair with, but I have made another Stanton. So, um, I mentioned, um, cashmere patterns dress or, um, good gracious, cashmere patterns drafts for a busty figure. Um, I think it's their smallest cup size is a CD, um, and that's different than bra cup size. So this is the difference between your upper bust and your full bust. And I think it starts at like three inches. Like if your upper bust, full bust is three inches, you're in like the CD cup, and I mean, there's a range. I'm in the GF cup because I, or a GH cup, because I have, um, maybe CD isn't three, maybe it's less than that, because I have, um, uh, like a four to four and a half inch difference between my upper bust and full bust, depending on the day, sometimes five. Um, <clears throat> so I'm in the biggest cup size. But my daughter, um, she is also busty, and these patterns, now that they're in, a few of them are in the full size range, she wears their size two with an EF cup, and I have to make like zero alterations. Now if I were making like the fit and flare dress or something, I'd probably have to lengthen the bodice a little bit because she's so long in the in the body. Um, and occasionally I'll have to maybe shorten some things. But the stuff, the Concord t-shirt, I mean it's just, it fits both of us so well. So if you have a large bust, I highly recommend cashmere patterns. And I'm not affiliated with them at all, I just really love them. So I have made myself, and you've not even seen my other two, I've made myself four Stanton <laughs> sweatshirts. And, which is also funny because I really don't repeat patterns that often other than, you know, like a, a good t-shirt pattern or like my button-up pattern. I use, you know, stuff like that. But for the most part, I really don't repeat patterns very often. So I just think that this is so funny. But I love this. Uh, it's the perfect sweatshirt. It's the perfect sweatshirt to, to me. Um, this comes in two views. It comes just a pullover with a hood, although I have hacked one for myself um, that's just a, a neckband instead of putting a hood on at all. Um, and again, I've got a hoodie for myself, like a jacket that you've not seen yet, and then another pullover for my spring that I'll be showing you soon. But this is the uh, zip up 
jacket and it's a little bit cropped. It's not like hitting at my natural at your natural waist cropped, but like high hip. So um, that's why my daughter likes it. It looks adorable on her. But let's talk about this fabric before we talk about the pattern anymore. I was ugh, gifted from um, Sarah from June and Lou Fabrics, reached out to me and wanted to know if she could sponsor a couple of my looks for spring. And um, she sent me two fabrics and, or actually three, because she sent me the ribbing that goes with this as well. Um, you'll be seeing um, the dress that I'm gonna be making here soon for myself, because I really wanted to try their viscose um, chalet, their, um, yeah, it's their Visco Chalet. I was very excited about trying some of that out, so I'll be using that for myself. But I knew that the CU at Six French Terry is such a good pairing with the Stanton. It's like my, it's my favorite pairing. I've made two of my four have been made out of CU at Six fabrics um, with the matching ribbing. That's also what I love, the matching ribbing. So she sent me um, enough of this this fabric is just so cute. It is so cute. These are in my daughter's colors, um, but she sent me the French Terry and also the matching ribbing, as you can see on the cuffs and on the bottom, for this sweatshirt for my daughter. Look at this fabric, though. This ticked all the boxes. My daughter is a huge animal lover, and she's an artist, and she loved this, like, you see all the animals on it? Isn't that gorgeous? And they have, like, a sketched quality about them. And I get that this could go more juvenile, you know, if you wanted to do like a cute little um, baby like onesie or something like that, that this could go juvenile, but it looks really cool on a teenager as well, I have to say. Um, and it's such a perfect, such a perfect pattern in fabric marriage. So um, this pattern has you lining like your inner pockets here and also the hood. I just use the self fabric for all of those and it gives it such a good weight. Um, it's just perfect. Um, I got the dark green zipper, got that from Wawak, and then I like to use shoestrings for my drawstrings. It's just my favorite um, thing to do. And she just went through my stash and she wanted, she didn't want ones that matched. She wanted, which was good, because that's really hard to do, but she wanted something that kind of contrasted and popped. So she picked out the purple that were from my stash. So um, yeah, those are my, I'll, I'll link this down below. I get people that ask, um, like, oh, what sho shoelaces do you use? Because I just get them off Amazon. And it's the same link, because it comes in a whole bunch of different colors. And I buy, like, the 51 and a half, but it's, like, 51 point something or other inch length. And you get two pairs. So you get four uh, <laughs> four drawstrings in one package. Um, anyway, it's just my favorite. And you can get a whole bunch of fun colors. So I will link all that down below. But this is her Stanton. She loves it. I think it's adorable on her. She does wear athleisure. She likes to wear leggings and stuff like that um, to school um, on occasion. And this, you know, she talks about the copy paste, copy paste. She doesn't want to look like everyone else. So this allows her to be comfortable and, you know, wear leggings and stuff like that without completely fitting in um, and just, you know, doing her own thing. So um, she's very, very, very pleased. And this just fits a full bust so well. So well. I, yeah. But I think I'm ready to put the pattern in the pattern drawer for now. <laughs> I think I am finished with this pattern until one of my current ones wears out or my daughter asks for one. So we're done for now with it. Um, I have enough in my wardrobe. <laughs> but it's so good. Okay. So those are the two things I made for my daughter. I am going to swap Lena out here real quick and show you what I made for my son now. <laughs> okay, so this is what I made for my son. I also think this is really funny because Lena obviously has boobs and <laughs> my son doesn't. So I'm just trying to like button this up and I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks like a, a woman's shirt a little bit. It, it's not. <laughs> okay, for my son. But before we get going, I'll show you up close, but can we appreciate the pattern matching across this button placket. Maybe you can't even see it, but the button placket is right here. And look at that with my birds all the way down. I'm, I am so, no one in my household appreciates this. My sewing friend Marissa was over yesterday. I showed her this shirt. She very much appreciated it. So only, only my sewing people will appreciate this. So I just want, to show off. I was very proud of this. Okay, so I've made my son four things, um, two of the same thing, basically. Um, let's talk about the shorts first, because that'll be quick. Um, you guys have already seen this. I made him two more pairs of, and he'll be wearing these shorts when you see him 
with the, um, I think he's wearing the gray shorts with this shirt and then the blue shorts with this other shirt that I'll show you. Um, but I made him two more pairs of the Thomas, the um, Love Notions Tom, men's Thomas track pant and, as shorts. And I did a video, and I'll pop it right up here, of um, how I made them into shorts and also how I did the zippered pocket. He just has to have a zippered pocket. Uh, these are very similar to the red ones that you guys saw on, uh, when was that? Tuesday my, from Destashify, because this fabric came from Destashify. Um, this is the same fabric. The blue is the same fabric I made my other paste skirt out of. Um, but these are just like the red ones, except I've put the um, drawstring, we just did black on this, on the inside, because he wanted to be able to tie those tight and have a shirt hanging out, but not see the drawstring hang out under the shirt. Um, so yeah, so I've made him a pair in the blue and also a pair in the charcoal gray. So, I'm just gonna zip these pockets up because that's what makes me happy. Um, but yeah, they're the same as those red shorts. Um, and again, I show you how I do the red shorts. Um, I just did them in the same fabric even, except, <laughs> I mean, it's the same fabric for the waistband, the same ponte I used for the waistband on both. I literally just have the same fabric in three different colors. So, not much more to say about those he got and technically i made the red pair for him in april as well but he got he has three pairs of fancy shorts now to wear golfing to wear to um church and all that jazz but he had also asked me for some bright print like hawaiian type shirts now i know that there are many like Hawaiian type shirt patterns out there, including Simplicity even has one, but Wardrobe by Me has one. Um, and I had him look at a couple of the patterns and he said that he just really likes the, um, he likes to be able to button his shirts all the way up to the top. I don't know why, my daughter does that too. I don't know why, but they like to button all the way to the top. So he didn't want like a camp style collar um, that was, you know, supposed to be open that like most like tropical shirts are. So um, he wanted the collar stand and the collar. So I had this pattern and this is, it came off the rack so it has a weird number on it, but this is Simplicity 8753. And I think this pattern has a couple of different um, fronts actually, because my friend Marissa, um, who was here yesterday, um, doing a little bit of sewing she had mentioned that she's like oh i made my husband um who is a similar build to my son she's like oh i made him a um this wonderful shirt it was a simplicity pattern and she was looking through and she's like it was eight seven five three i'm like oh my gosh it's the same pattern we just had two different covers so this is a men's button-up shirt it comes with a um Oh gosh, what are the three? Like a classic cut, a modern cut, which I think is just like a little narrower, and then a slim cut that has, that's just like the modern cut, but it's got back darts. Um, so it's meant, I mean, this guy's wearing it untucked, but it's meant to be a tucked in shirt. However, my son is very long in the torso, just like his sister, and um, I thought, you know, I'm not even gonna mess, I didn't even mess around with the length, and it worked out perfectly. I made him the smallest size, so the size 34. Uh, so this is, Okay, the body measurements for a chest of 34 inches, which he has a chest of 34 inches. Why are the men's patterns? Like, it was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect on him. <laughs> so I don't know why the women's patterns. I guess ease for fittings, we have curves. I don't know. Anyway, so this was uh, view A. This shirt was view A. It's not buttoned up. And um, I the only alteration that I made to this um, was to shorten the sleeves and honestly I'm like I don't even know how long I want these sleeves so I just cut them off at the <laughs> length and in shorten line and then I folded it the pattern back on itself an inch so that you know because there's that little you know when you get to the sleeve pattern because it goes down when you get to the hem it kicks out again so that it has enough length to ease back up in um, so I did that so now I can cut a short sleeve from that pattern piece or um, the long sleeve so maybe he'll get a couple of long sleeves because he loves the way that this fits so this is, um, yeah, the short sleeve. It may be a tad long, he thinks, but it's a relaxed shirt, and he has worn this shirt so much. And I want you to really appreciate the fabric. It's so beautiful. This is a um, Lady McElroy cotton lawn that I bought from Minerva that he picked out. But look, it's got like these crazy colors, but these like big leaves. And then you see the giraffe? There's the giraffe neck. I think we lose the head on there. Oh, here, here's the giraffe. The giraffe's back here. See the giraffe head? There's a zebra. There is a tiger. 
There's a tiger. Um, it's just the coolest. There's a bird over here, like a parrot. It is just the coolest fabric and he loved the colors and the cotton lawn is perfect. The original shirts that he had, that he saw when we were in Florida were like a silk, um, it may have been a silk viscose blend or silk twill even. And I'm like, he is, I'm not making him silk shirts <laughs> because he ruins, I mean, he's a 15 year old boy. He ruins everything. I'm like, no, we're going with cotton and I'll do a cotton lawn because it is nice and, um, tightly woven and that will feel lovely and it'll feel luxurious, but I'll be able to wash it easily and not have to worry about stains. So, um, yeah, and he loves these and he's been wearing them. So I did zero alterations to the pattern on this one, but when he had it on, I noticed that it was fitting just a little bit slimmer than what we wanted. And he's a very slim guy just be for the style of the shirt. Cause we wanted something loose and flowing. So let me, I did make an adjustment to this one before I cut it out. So let me switch shirts on Lena and I will show you what I did to that one. Okay, so this one is more fitted through, I could tell just putting it on Lena, obviously Lena has boobs, my son does not, um, but it's a little bit tighter because we wanted a looser fit, so I added a pleat to the back part of the bottom part of the shirt. So there's the yoke, and what I did was I just, the back, um, the lower part of the back gets cut on the fold. So I just moved the whole pattern piece equidistantly an extra inch away from the fold, and, um, then just did the pleat to make it the right size to fit into the yoke. So that just gives him a little bit more relaxed fit and um, it's perfect. This is also a Lady McElroy cotton lawn. Um, this print is one, I mean, this one's a little bit easier to see all the different um, creatures, the flamingos, the, the toucan and everything. But look at my pattern matching. I'm just so proud of it. See? You can just see that, well, you can see the button on his nose, but you can just see the, the edge there. And on my flamingo, just very pleased. <laughs> Again, no one in my family was like excited about this, so <laughs> I have to share it. Um, but yeah, this is the same pattern that I used this one. I just made two of them. These sewed up really quickly um, because you're not having to mess with any cuffs or any plackets. Um, this has a grown on, placket for the buttons. So it just is something that it gets folded twice on itself. Um, and then popping the collar, it's the collar and collar stand is like the quick, you know, the hardest part. Um, but I can almost do that in my sleep anymore. I've made so many button up shirts. <laughs> I've used my little um, Bernina machine so much for buttonholes recently, which is good. So that is everything I've made my son. Two shirts, two pairs of shorts. Now I'm going to show you what I've made my sister. Okay, so now I'm here with my final two makes. Again, I don't have any footage to show you of my sister in these yet, but stay tuned next week. <laughs> so this one I'm not gonna show you up close. This is just um, the uh, Aria button up shirt that I made from Love Notions. This is their newest pattern release. It's still on sale um, through Monday. Um, is the last day. Monday, which is May 2nd, <laughs> is the last day. And um, you can get the pattern just by itself on sale for $9, I believe, normally $12.50. And she has released a course, which is just like a, a sew along basically, but it's holding your hand through the sewing of the entire shirt. Um, all the tips and tricks, that kind of thing. Uh, for $25, the course is gonna be $25 normally. But right now, if you put the course, if you buy the course, put it in your cart, you get the pattern for free until Monday. Monday is the last day. Um, so it, the pattern is on sale for $9, or you can get the pattern free if you buy the course. After Monday, the pattern goes up to $12.50, and you have to buy it separately from the $25 course. So just throwing that out there. And you can use Tomcat 10 to get an extra 10% off the bundle as well, or anything else, even the sale prices. So just throwing that, that out there. And even today's Feature Friday. <laughs> but I showed you guys this on Tuesday. I'll link up to that video if you are interested. Um, but yeah, there's not much more to say about this. I use the Robert Kaufman, I think it's called Nirvana co Double Cotton Gauze. I think that's what it's called. And I got it from fabric.com. Um, I can't remember the color name. I'll link it, the color down below, or the fabric from fabric.com down below. Cause she was wanting some double um, gauzes for button up shirts, she sits at the ball fields and um, wanted uh, just a double cotton gauze, something very easy breezy, she can roll up the sleeves, that kind of thing. So I made her this one, it is the size medium with the standard bust, there's no darts, so it's very loose fitting. Um, 
yeah, it's got the cool like all in one. It's got a collar collar stand, but the collar and collar stand are one piece. And uh, the beautiful tower pockets, and I use these shell buttons that I got from um, Minerva. Or not from Minerva, from Wawak. <laughs> Sorry. And then I did the, um, the bias uh, hem facing in the same fabric that I made my daughter's Easter dress that you just saw, because I had just enough left over. Uh, my si sister is a sunlit summer. Uh, my daughter is a calm summer. So they're both summers, but a little bit different in coloring, but they have a lot of similar colors. So um, anyway, hopefully she really loves this. I can't wait to see her try it on, um, but it'll be on Instagram on Saturday. And if you want to get a sneak peek, and then I will have actual footage of her like twirling and stuff that I'll put up on the channel next week. So this was her um, first thing. Now, this one's the one we'll talk about, and I talk a little bit more about sewing with cotton gauze with this one. So this shirt is, um, this was, uh, she sent me a picture and said, hey, I want to recreate this. And it is from Aerie.com, and it was just like a cover-up, but like a button-up shirt. It had raglan sleeves, real loose, oversized, um, to throw over uh, your bathing suit. And so, you know, her kids are... Um, how old are my kids? Her kids are 11, almost 9, and 6. So there's two and a half years between each of her kids. And um, so she's at the pool with them all the time, and they have a pool in their neighborhood. So she wanted just a nice little throw over, and she also wanted um, the double cotton gauze. So I thought I would sh talk more about cotton gauze in this. But the big thing about the shirt was the um, fact that it had like this deconstructed look, like the raw edges. So, sorry, this light, this is like a light um, ice blue, kind of, and it's blowing out my camera. Are you coming back up here? But she wanted the deconstructed edges just like that pattern. So I actually had a lot of fun making this shirt because the pattern obviously was not meant to have raw edges anywhere. Are you coming up here again? I keep getting up and it's making her get down and, oh, such a hard time for Gidget today. <laughs> Um, but at first I started with the pattern. I went with the Style Arc um, Ana woven shirt dress. Is that what it's called? Something. It's the Ana. But um, obviously this is a long like maxi length dress and she just wanted something like mid thigh, a little bit longer. That she can just throw on as a, as a swimsuit cover up. So um, I went, what did I end up doing? I put the pocket piece on. I didn't put the pockets in this, but I laid the pocket piece on top of the pattern just to determine like where I wanted it to stop. And I didn't want it to go all the way down to the slit. The slit starts like right below the knee, but I didn't want this to be that long um, for her. So I think I went a couple of inches up. I think in total, the bottom notch, which is the bottom at like notch of the pocket, not the pocket bag, but where the pocket gets sewn in, I went down seven inches total. Um, and then just redrew the hem to be a little bit more shirt tail hem and went from there. But it's also raglan sleeve. Now it does have a, a collar and she just wanted a collar stand, just a banded collar. So I actually, cause I was making the Aria at the same time, which does come with a band, just a, the banded collar. And I just took that pattern piece and put it against the collar piece for this pattern and kind of just redrew it. <laughs> so, and it fit perfectly. I just wanted to make sure that the part that sewed into the shirt was the same as the collar piece. And then I just redrew the shape of the collar into this collar band and it worked perfectly. So, as you can see, I have raw edges that are right here. I have raw edges all around the band. There are raw edges on either side of the placket. Hopefully you can see that okay. And then my pocket is all raw. Like it's just literally slapped on there and sewn. Nothing's folded under. I did fold the top, but I folded it right sides over and then stitched it down so you've got like the fringe there at the top of the pocket. The plackets are meant to be, um, there's like a three eighths of an inch, I think, that gets folded in and then the po then the placket gets folded again, uh, like an inch and a quarter or something, and then it gets sewn down for the placket of this. But what I did was I just, um, folded it over to the right side, sewed it down so it had a lot, like that three eighths of an inch overhang, because I wanted some overhang, and then I just trimmed it a little bit. <laughs> so that's how I did um, the placket. Now, for the shoulder seams, because this is a raglan style, this also is a two-piece sleeve. I did sew the center seam um, that goes down the whole 
front of the arm here. I did go ahead and sewed that right sides together, serged it, pressed it to one side, and top stitched it. Just because I, you know, I wanted a little bit of the deconstructed, but not a lot. Um, and then the inside of the shirt is all serged and finished off nicely. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> but for these, uh, attaching the raglan sleeves onto the front and the back, what I did was I, well, I'll go ahead and do this. I serged, turn this inside out. Okay, so I surged the um, the front and the back, the raglan seams, so you can see those are surged. And then, wait, sorry, there's the raglan seam. <laughs> the raglan seam is surged. And then I took, so that's a quarter of an inch. And then I took um, some quarter inch um, wonder tape, like double stick wonder tape, and just went right along that surged edge with that which gives me half an inch, and these are actually three-eighths of an inch um, wide seam allowances, but I then just went and, and laid it over. So when three-eighths of an inch gets folded, like put on top of each other, so you're not sewing it together and then opening out, you're, you're layering it on top of, uh, on top of itself, it would be three quarters of an inch. So I just made sure that there was from the cut edge of my sleeve that I was leaving raw and the surged edge that's under here of my shirt, I made sure that those were about three quarters of an inch. And then I just stuck it in place with that wonder tape so I didn't use any pins. And that helped me kind of ease it just a little bit because there's curve and there's like fighting curves, but it worked fine. And then I top stitched it down twice. So I top stitched it, um, well, you can see, I top stitched it um, once and then again a little bit closer to the to the edge and did that on all the sleeves and then I did the side seams I just right sides together surged them and then just top stitched them down like you normally would okay I hope that makes sense it's called it's actually called a lapped seam they do that a lot with leather most of the time though they will take like chalk and you'll mark in the seam allowance and then you make sure that your chalk marks are on top of each other which is a more precise way to do it but <laughs> Um, you know, I, I was kind of going quickly and this worked fine. So you can do that. You can, with a um, chalk or with some kind of like erasable marker, you can mark in your seam lines and then just make sure those are layered on top of each other to make it more precise if you wanted to. And then for the cuffs, the shirt actually went in re like together really quickly. I'll explain how I did the collar too because that was actually super easy, um, even for a collar. For the sleeves, uh, the cuff piece on this was just like one piece that got folded over on itself. And there's no placket on this. Um, it's just a wide sleeve that ends with a cuff at the bottom. So there's no button or anything on the um, on the cuff, which I think will make it even easier for um, swimsuit and just throwing it on and off. So what I did is you can see here on the right side, I've got it all raw. So I, um, long rectangle, sewed them together, right sides together. And then I sewed, I put um, interfacing just in one half of it instead of the whole thing because I don't want the interfacing up there with the raw edge. So I just did it on the bottom half. And then I sewed that, the bottom half, right sides together with the wrong side of the shirt and then press that all up. So if I were making this per instructions, I would then at the top, you know, fold that under the three eighths, fold it down to cover the stitching line, you know, and top stitch it in place. But instead of that, I just folded it down, left it raw and top stitched it in place. And then I had the, um, the cut edge of the fabric that's right there. So, um, so for the collar band, I would normally sew them together, right sides together, across the whole top seam to finish that off. And then leave the bottom open, and then that's how, you know, I would attach one side to the um, right side of the shirt, and, you know, the of the neckline, and then flip it over, fold under the seam allowance, <laughs> do the burrito method, and then top stitch it in place, you know, for a clean finish. But for this one, because I wanted this top edge to be all raw, um, I sewed one side, 
to the, it doesn't even matter, to the outside of the shirt, you know, right sides together um, with like a basting stitch kind of. And then I put the other one, sandwiched it on the other side and sewed just across the bottom there um, also on the shirt. So the shirt was sandwiched between the two um, banded collar pieces that were right sides together. And uh, then when I flipped everything up, the whole top obviously was open, you know, the top part. So then I just pushed those together, <laughs> gave everything a good press, and then just sewed a stitch that went all the way around here. And then I did trim a little bit so that there wasn't quite, although this only had a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which was about perfect. Um, yeah, and left all that raw. And then just put in my button and buttonholes down the front. This actually went together really quickly yesterday. Um, I even put the pattern together and cut everything out. Um, I mean, just within like a couple of hours. This went together really quickly. So anyway, that is her uh, Style Arc and A, and it is a dupe of, we're recreating a shirt that she saw from Aerie. Um, I then stuck this in the washing machine and to give it a little bit better fray, and I had to give it a little bit of a haircut. Cause you know, some of these, these things get like really long and she, that, I think that does bother her. I'm also getting like pieces all over me. So I'll let her go. I mean, she can trim have however much she wants. Oh, and then with the hem, I literally just sewed a, a stay stitch line basically around the entire hem of the shirt. I could have left it raw. I just want to stop the fray at some point. I don't want it to like continually fray. So um, I just sewed like a stay stitch around the bottom at three eighths of an inch up. And then yeah, just let it all raw there at the hem. So I realize this not, is not for everyone, the deconstructed look, but um, I had a lot of fun with this. Okay, let's talk about cotton gauze, double cotton gauze. So I get a lot of questions on this. Because it is cotton, so you know, I think a lot of people think, well, it should be easy to sew, and it is because it is cotton. But let me just, let me talk about what, let the light go back, <laughs> what um, cotton gauze is. So cotton gauze, um, is cotton, but it is woven in a very loose weave, um, which is what gives it that real light, kind of see-through, airy effect. It makes it wonderful to wear. Um, but because of that, that's why um, people will make like a double gauze or even a triple gauze to get the effects, but without so much translucency. Is that a word? Without it being so translucent. <laughs> you want some more opacity, some more, make it a little bit more opaque so you can't see quite through it. So these are double cotton gauzes. And what that is, is that they have taken two layers of gauze and they have, um, there's a little connecting stitch every so often that connects the two layers together. Kind of like quilting. And if you look really closely, you're not gonna be able to see it on the camera, but if you have any in your stash and you look really closely, you can kind of see those little connecting um, spots. But I thought this would be easy to show you because you could really see um, the fabric I can pull apart, maybe, the two layers. So there we have, I can kind of pull apart the two layers and those are um, put together as one. Now, so this is lovely because if you look at like just one layer, you can 100% see right through it. So the looser weave, two things, looser weave, any fabric that is a looser weave is shiftier to sew because your um, warp and weft threads are further apart, so there's more movement in those warp and weft threads, which makes it they can get off grain kind of easily. Um, but again, they, it makes them really nice, light and breezy, but you just have to remember, linen can be the same way sometimes if you have a looser weave linen. So this is the way, um, so cotton gauze can be shifty in that way, hard to stay on grain, it can move around. Now when you put two layers of that together and you're just attaching it at little points every now and again, so now you have two layers that can kind of move independently of one another, it can get shifty even more. Um, so that's just something to keep in, in mind. It's not impossible, it's much easier than if you were, um, it's even much easier to work with than like rayon. Because rayon, <laughs> rayon, it is the weight of the thread that pulls it down and can pull things out of grain and makes things go like wonky and crazy because rayon is just a heavy fiber um, with the material that it's made out of. So with a cotton, double cotton gauze, few things. Another thing a lot of people like about it is when it gets washed, you get this wrinkly, crinkly effect. 
and some is, is wrinkly and more crinkly than others. And that is like the whole quilting effect. If you've ever done a quilt and it looks all nice and smooth, you've done all the quilting, and then the, the real cool part comes when you wash it, and then some parts of it shrink up and it gets that wrinkled effect, which is kind of the whole, um, texture and the coolness that comes with like a quilt same thing with the with the gauze that's what's causing that because um it is it held in place by certain points within the fabric so um it creates a cool effect now when you get your fabric and you wash it and it gets all wrinkly and crinkly i recommend iron it as flat as you can don't worry the crinkle will come back when you wash it don't worry but the reason you want to iron that as flat as you can, and it's also very easy to get like iron in wrinkles, just because like one layer may, you know, smooth out more than the other and then you're accidentally, you have to kind of pull it taut to keep things, you know, from ironing in wrinkles. If you iron in a wrinkle, it's not the end of the world, but you know, you just have to be a little bit, it's not as, as quick as like a rayon for instance, or a cotton lawn or something where it's just one layer. So you do have to watch that, but iron it as flat as possible because cotton with your body heat loosens and it grows same thing with linen so throughout the day your garment can possibly grow on you so you want to be i mean like loose shirts like this are perfect for it because it can you know if it grows a little bit it's not noticeable but if you don't iron those wrinkles out and you go ahead and cut it and make up your garment it may fit great with those wrinkles in, but the minute your body heat starts warming it up, not only is the fabric loosening, but all those wrinkles start to come out and then it grows even more. So just a little tip, you do wanna iron the wrinkles out and or as much as possible. It doesn't have to be, you know, starched flat. It doesn't have to be that, but just as much as possible because uh, cotton gauze does grow when it warms up with your body heat, just like linen. So um, keep that in mind and, and again, wash it, the wrinkles will come back. So don't worry about that. <laughs> so there you have it. In fact, when this came, um, it, it's like a dimpled effect. Just like with a quilt, you get like a dimpled effect. When this came in the mail, uh, straight from fabric.com, it was smoother than, I mean, just cause you know, factory uh, had the chemical, you know, the, the starches and stuff like that to make it for the bolt and that sort of thing. Very smooth. The minute I washed it, it, you know, it, it got its body. And then, um, I mean, this has been, you don't have the crinkles that you have in this one because this one has been pressed so much and I've not washed this again since making it. Once my, which, but I did this cause I wanted to get that, um, the raw edges. When my sister washes this the first time, it will look exactly like this. So just something to keep in mind, um, with cotton gauze. It's not hard, definitely give it a try. Interfacing helps. Um, but even with interfacing, because you're only interfacing one side of it, it, that top layer can still kind of shift around too. Just try not to be, if, you're, if your front placket is not as straight as it's supposed to be, it's okay. <laughs> It's okay. It, everything will be fine. If you have to trim a little up here or there, if it gets a little um, off, it's okay. It wears beautifully. It's so comfortable to wear. You just kind of have to give in to that, um, the nature of it. Just like with linen, you have to give in to the rumple. <laughs> you just have to, you don't want it creased, but you do have to give in to the rumple. Same thing with the cotton gauze. So beautiful to sew with, and it is easier than like a rayon, um, but it can't, it's not as easy as like a cotton lawn. So that was very long winded. I am, I've had a request though to do, I did that whole series on learning fabrics and I went through and talked about fabrics and, and you know the different weaves and stuff that are used with certain fibers and I just never got around to cotton. So um, I am gonna do one on cotton here soon. So that will be coming. If, if any of you just really nerd out by that kind of stuff and like to hear all about you know the different fabrics, I will be doing a whole cotton, um, cotton one as well, probably sometime this summer. So stay tuned. Okay guys, I think that's all I've got for today. That was a long one. <laughs> and I hope you guys are participating in the um, challenge as well. There's some really great prizes. Again, I'm gonna be submitting six entries because my son's um, two pieces I'll just be submitting as one entry each. Um, so you can submit as many as you want. So as much selfless sewing as you did this month, you can submit those entries. I had a lot of fun this month sewing for other people. I sew for my kids a lot, but it was a lot of fun to um, be able to make a couple things for my sister and to be able, because I'm gonna see her um, so, I mean, you're watching this on Friday. I'm seeing her right now, <laughs> but, um, it's really fun to make her stuff and then be able to immediately um, get it on her. So, uh, that's not something we get to do very often since she lives 500 miles away from me. So anyway, very, very, uh, 
felt good this month to be able to do that for people. Okay guys, that is all I have for today. Um, Sunday is the last of the Upland Sew Along, but it's also May 1st. So starting on Sunday, I will be chronicling my outfits. It's Me Made May, and I'll be chronicling my outfits every day, and then all the rest of the Sundays in May, I will be doing a roundup of my outfits, and I am strictly wearing things from my spring capsule. Um, so there'll be some pieces on there you just haven't seen yet, which hopefully I can I have everything made up now. I just need to film it so you can see um, what the different pieces are. So anyway, those videos will be coming in May. So make sure you've hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Have a good weekend.